So I was inspired to make a video today based on the confluence of two holidays. Um, see, as a Christian today, I observe Good Friday, or remember the uh, the death of Jesus on the cross, and remember his you know his suffering for all, for all mankind. And um, as an environmentalist, I observe Earth Day today, um, and uh, you know I think that the, the uh, the synchronicity of, of those two holidays overlapping has you know, deep significance that invites us to reflect upon you know, how we are crucifying the earth. Uh, and, and I think you know, the, the sort of poetic um, symbolism of that is you know, even more driven home by, by remembering that last Earth Day was when the uh, BP Deepwater Horizon oil spill happened, and so I mean, you can almost think of that the oil spill. Yeah, if you if you looked at the pictures, you know, there was kind of a reddish color to the ocean. You know, the ocean turning red like blood. And so think of that almost like as like the blood of Christ spilling out into uh, into the sea. So um, yeah, there there's that, that's a very powerful symbol, a very powerful image. To think about and um, yeah, it gives me a great opportunity to think about what it is to particip participate in Christ's suffering. Because see, I, th I think that um, too often Christianity is painted as a religion of belief. Uh, you know, there you know, you have to just believe that a set of things happen, like the virgin birth and the crucifixion and the resurrection. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, etc. Um, but I think if you look at you know, particularly Saint Paul's theology in his letters, there's a great emphasis on participation, uh, participation in Christ's life and, and teachings, participation in His death and resurrection. Um, you know, and I think you know, the liturgical calendar reflects that. I mean, you have to remember that Christianity started as a mystery religion. We celebrate the mysteries of Christ. You know, and the the crucifixion is a mystery, and the resurrection is a mystery. That we and we have to you know participate in these holidays to uh, reflect upon re reflect upon what they mean for us. Uh, you know, what you know, how does the crucifixion um, reflect back on, upon me. What, do, what does it mean for me today, live, you know, living today in the 21st century? Um, and so, uh, and so, you know, I think that, you know, what the crucifixion invites us to do is reflect upon um, Christ's suffering, but also how Christ's suffering reflects back on the suffering of the world today. Um, and I think it goes both ways because it because you know we we tend we tend to think of the crucifixion resurrection as our, us being reconciled to God, but I think it's also God reconciling a, Himself to us. Um, you know, I, I think you know it it represents God's participation in our suffering. And so you know the, the whole participation thing. I, th I think that's uh, that that's where I think um, where I think the significance of prayer is. I mean, and, you know, that's that's one of the things that atheists love to beat theists over the head about is, um, you know, I was they'll they'll, they'll show all these um, studies showing that that uh, prayer is ineffective, and I've I've actually seen some say that, yeah, might 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 be a little might might say it's not quite as open and shut a case as as they say it is, but yeah, wh whatever the case, um, yeah, the. I think that uh, you know, if if someone treats prayer as a substitute for action, then I, I think they don't get the point of prayer. The point is when you pray for those who are suffering, those who are sick and dying. Um, what you are doing, I think, is is not so much you know trying to influence God to uh, you know to change his mind on something and and suddenly make things all better. I think that that's a um, uh, that I think that's a less mature image of God. I think what what if, what for me I think it does is um, we is through prayer we we participate in their suffering. Yeah, we 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 take it on in ourselves and um, through that prayer kind of transmute that suffering 
into compassion. And by growing compassion, we become uh, agents of, you know, the, uh, of, of the redemption of the world. Um, you know, and so God, God calls upon us to uh, remember those who are suffering and, um, you know, and keep them in our prayers in order to you know, transform ourselves into more compassionate people um, and thereby help produce a, a better world. Uh, you know, Whitehead has this great line about God. He, he says, God is uh, the fellow sufferer who understands. And, and I think that that is a far more deep uh, theology than any theology that talks about God's power, you know, being all powerful and omnipotent and infinite, you know, but, you know, and it's, instead of talking about this sort of infinite God who, who kind of is kind of too big to think about it, God is, you know, the fellow sufferer, one who participates in your, who experiences your suffering, the, the world's suffering, and, you know, is, uh, and is deeply moved by that and calls upon us to to, to, to feel one another's suffering and um, through compassion uh, transform that world. And that, that, I think, is how we participate in the resurrection as well. I mean, that's the redemption of the world. Um, and, and so I guess that kind of brings me to this uh, idea called social sin. Uh, you know, particularly in the Protestant world, we tend to uh, think of sin as something individual, like, you know, did I lie today? Did I, uh, you know, was I, was I greedy? Did I, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't give money to the homeless guy because, you know, I, I, I felt because I wanted to, you know, go, go out and have a drink or whatever, but, you know, what, whatever, whatever it is. I think that it's far more profound to think about how um, our society is fallen how how we have collectively fallen into greed and selfishness and um you know the uh yeah and just, uh, just destructive habits um yeah i mean poverty is a social sin uh and an and environmental destruction is, is not one that are sort of uh you know the sort of rapacious um greed that, that is involved in, in the capitalist system is something that we have to account for. Um, and, you know, when I look at oil, you know, I could, I could look at the BP disaster and point all the fingers at BP and, and say, you're bad people and you know, look what you did. And obviously they, they do have a lot to answer for. But, you know, I also had to look at myself and say, you know, I have a car, I drive, I, I fill up on gas and, and, you know, even if I didn't, um, I would still go to the supermarket and buy food that was trucked in from elsewhere. So, I mean, the oil economy is, you know, it, it, it's a collective sin. It's not something that we can individually overcome. We have to actually work together to redeem society from, uh, from that, um, that burden. And, um, and you know, I think that the crucifixion and resurrection is a powerful symbol for that. And uh, I'll, I have a lot of thoughts about the resurrection that I'll get to on Sunday because I've, I'm probably going to make a pretty long video about that. But, I mean, yeah, I, I think that um, we have to understand what it is to participate in, suffer, in, in the world's suffering, to understand what it is to participate in its redemption as well. So that's my thoughts for now.